Once upon a time, there was a girl named Gertrude, and she wished to be taken away to an amazing world filled with wonder and magic. Lucky for her, some wishes do come true, and she found herself face first in the wonderful world of Fairyland. Here, she met the Queen of Fairyland, Queen Claudia. And if she wanted to go home, all she would have to do was go on a quest to get a special key that would allow her to go back to her world. The Queen gave Gertrude two things to aid her on her quest, a guide by the name of Laragon, and a map to all of the known lands. The quest should only take her about a day, and that was 27 years ago. Welcome to the Complete Story series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read it dramatically back to to you. All alterations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Gertrude continues to travel through the lands, but so much time has passed that she's become hateful, miserable, and disgusting. The moon, who was telling our story, is soon stopped by Gert, telling him, I can hear you down here! And the moon tells her, How dare you! So she blows his face off with a cannon. And there can't be any witnesses. So she shoots the rest of the stars out of the sky. Down below, as Queen Claudia is watching the night sky filled with shooting stars, she realizes that they aren't really shooting stars. They're the dead stars falling around her castle. This is the last straw for Claudia. Because she's the queen, she can't hurt Gertrude because she's Fairyland's guest. But she knows someone who can. Later, Gertrude made her way to Lost Fungus, where she thought robbing a casino might be a good idea. And after she was tased by a group of mushroom police, it turned out to not be such a good idea. However, she manages to free herself later from the mushroom police by eating them. And as more enter the room after her, she decides that maybe she can't eat them all. So now would be a good time to escape. Outside the window that Gertrude is running to, Larry is waiting with his flying pig friend telling him, just wait a minute. Gert is probably choking someone, eating a shroom or two, or looking for a window to jump out of. But before Larry could even finish his sentence, Gert comes flying out of the window, and Larry's pig friend tells him, You're pretty good. As the group begins to fly away, Gert has a question for Larry. Has he ever tasted his thoughts? Gertrude would continue to talk to Larry and the flying pig, but then the pig drops Gertrude into the ocean, telling Larry, I can take a lot of talking, but she just said the word blah for the last 65 miles. You're on your own, Larry. As Larry begins to grab her and pull her towards an island, she begins to ask where they are. And Larry says they're on Ice Cream Island. And as they get to the shore, she asks, why is it so cold here? Larry says, the name of the island is Ice Cream Island. The word ice is in the name, that's why. After throwing up from her recent hallucinations, you know, when she ate the thoughts of mushroom people, she begins to ask to see the map, and she begins to plan their next trip through the Howling Hollows. Larry tells her that's probably a bad idea, you know, because you're running with Mooney through the night cycles off in chaos, so if all of the guys in Howling Hollows are wolfed out, we might get stuck there for a while. Gertrude tells them that that's a pretty good call. She's not all about getting killed and stuff. And then a voice behind her tells her, that's too bad, because that's exactly what he's here to do, and stuff. Later, Gertrude is sitting in a bar talking to the severed head of the hunter that was sent to kill her, telling him her problems, and like, he really gets her. If only he didn't try and kill her, and her having to kill him with his own ax. They could have been total besties. Meanwhile, at Queen Claudia's castle, Claudia receives word of the huntsman failing his mission. Her assistant, Sir Nimbus, asks if he should get her a new list of champions, and she tells him no. But as she looks down at her crystal ball, she realizes that it's time to call Horibella. After speaking with Claudia, Horibella has a plan to get Gertrude. The only thing that she needs to do is turn someone into a zombie first, which she does. The next day, Gertrude is making her way through the red waters when Larry tells her that he found it. He actually found it! And Gertrude tells him, Serious? After all these years, you found the key? And Larry tells her, What? No! I found my lighter. I dropped it earlier. Gertrude says how much she hates his guts, but Larry says, No, she doesn't. And Gertrude tells him, No, she really does. She wants to rip them out and do hurtful things to them. As Gertrude begins to climb the wall, she says how she just doesn't get it. The Bobby Tom said it would be here. And Larry says that maybe she heard them wrong. And she climbs out of the hole and says, No, she remembers very clearly. Slay the tickle troll and hunt the heart. And Larry tells her, No, it was pay the fickle toll or be bumped to the start. Besides, there are no tickle trolls. There were giggle giants. Whatever, they won't be laughing anymore, will they? Gertrude goes on to state that they are near Fawn Valley, and she heard that the Horn and Hoof serves a mean margarita. So let's head over there. The two continue their journeys, but along their path, they notice a brain on the road. And Larry points out that the brain has a bite taken out of it. But Gertrude begins to ask what's wrong with that, and Larry tells her a lot is wrong with that. It's usually a bad sign. And Gertrude tells him that he's looking too deep into it. Soon, Gertrude makes her way to the horn and hoof, which is what she was hoping for, but everything seems a bit quiet. When she opens up the door to the bar, she sees why it's quiet. There are zombies in there. Gertrude tells Larry to hand her that axe that she took from the huntsman. She then stands in the doorway and asks the zombies, who wants to eat some of this? And Larry asks her, 
Do you ever hear yourself when you speak? Like, do you actually listen to the words that come out of your mouth? Gertrude begins chopping and slicing all of the zombies. And then when she goes back out, she sees that maybe there's more zombies. Like, a lot more zombies. But still, Gertrude manages to kill them all, and with the help of Larry, they use the scorch thing that they took back from Hork's Peak to burn all the bodies. After getting word that Gertrude still hasn't been killed, Cloud seeks out the Council of Elders to plan her next move. Once there, she proposes a new idea. Seeing as she can't kill the guest, they should bring a new guest here. That way, if the new guest finds the key and leaves, Gertrude will become a permanent resident of Fairyland, meaning that she can be killed here then. The council agrees with her and Claudia tells them that there's no time to dawdle. Meanwhile, over in the land of the polka corns, Gertrude is having a hard time understanding why a polka horn is chasing her, trying to kill her. She only took his horn! Gertrude begins to run across a log to escape the polka horn, but during her escape the log snaps and Gertrude falls into the valley down below. Larry flies down and finds Gertrude knocked out, and he tries to wake her up, but he isn't successful. Soon, it begins to rain, and Larry says how there's nothing like a little rain to make a miserable life just a little bit more miserable. Thanks, Weather King! Then a loud voice answers back telling him, You're welcome! While Gertrude remains unconscious, Larry decides to build a home, get married, have children, get a divorce, burn his house down, and he finally lays down next to Gertrude to accept whatever is going to come next. But something then begins to wake up Gertrude. She can hear someone singing, and it's not coming from Larry. It's coming from a little girl named Happy. While Larry begins to give Gertrude a shave, she asks Happy what she's doing here, and Gertrude learns that Happy is on a quest to find a key too, which really doesn't sit well with Gertrude. So Gertrude does what Gertrude would do, and she tries to kill Happy, except Happy has her own weapon, a rainbow beam, which happens to hit Gertrude. The beam sends Gertrude crashing through the trees behind her, basically killing her. But Gertrude doesn't die. She manages to live even with all of her insides falling out of her body, both her legs broken and her arm hanging off. It's like really hanging off. It's kind of gross. But Larry can fix her up, right? And she asks if he still has that thing that takes him to the place with all the thingies. And Larry asks if she means the vanity gate. Gertrude tells him, yeah, that thing. She needs to talk to an old friend. Back at Queen Claudia's castle, Claudia sits while getting her hair styled, and when she looks into the mirror, she notices a hand reach out and grab her, and soon it pulls her through. Inside the portal, Gertrude finishes pulling Claudia through and tells her they need to talk. Gertrude wants to know why there is another person from her world trying to fill her with rainbows. And Claudia tells her, Oh, you must have met Happy then. Well, she's just a guest like you on a quest to find a key. I would love to have you simply dead, but I just can't do it because you're a guest for now. But I must be going. And before disappearing, she tells Gertrude, It was a pleasure seeing her. Gertrude begins to ask, what does she mean by for now? And Larry tells her, if Happy manages to get the key first, then you'll become a permanent resident here. Gertrude realizes that that means that she can be killed by the queen then. What would it take to beat Happy then? Larry says, probably something impossible, like wield the power of one of the seven evil dooms. Gertrude looks at Larry and tells him, that's the best idea you've ever had. So Gertrude begins to travel through all of the terrible lands, the forests of the doomed trees, the bawling fields, scaling the peaks of the snoring snotties, until finally, she reaches Skull Rock. She climbs a long stairway until she finally reaches the top and she kills the guard standing watch. As the giant door begins to open, Larry tells her that going through giant doors that open on their own is not always a good thing because she might not like what she sees in there. But Gertrude does like what she sees because she sees Lord Darketh dead to death. Darketh picks her up and asks what does she want and Gertrude asks if he knows about this whole thing with the girl named Happy. And he tells her, yes, actually, it's quite a plot twist. Gertrude says that he should know that she's here to ask if she can borrow his power then. And he tells her, Of course you can, little lady. Gertrude's a little shocked. Really? And Darketh tells her, Yes, you just have to do one thing. Survive my dungeon and you'll be worthy. As the floor begins to crumble beneath her, Larry tells her he's going to sit this one out. And Gertrude gives him the bird and tells him to eat a dip before falling into the pit. Gertrude crashes on the floor and sees a clown behind her. She then says to herself, based on what Scully McBoner up there said, she was expecting things to be a little bit more scarier. But then the clown was just part of a tongue attached to a much scarier monster. Back in Fairyland Town, the townspeople have been celebrating the return of Happy after completing her quest and finally finding the key to go home. Shockingly, she did it in a day like you were supposed to. Happy says her goodbyes to everyone and Queen Claudia wishes her safe travels back home. Then dooms can be heard from a distance. Soon the ground begins to rumble and from the middle of the crowd, a giant dragon breaks through spewing green fire and killing the sun. Claudia watches this stating, this can't be happening. And while riding the dragon, Gertrude shouts to everyone, what's up muffin fluffers? Gertrude flies down and tells Happy that she may have caught her off guard the last time, but this time, she's prepared! 
Claudia then asks how she could have gotten this power and Gertrude tells her it's simple. She just had to pass Dark at the Dead Death's trials. And it seems Happy has her key. Happy tells her that she's learned a few new tricks as well and then she fires another rainbow beam filled with unicorns and flowers. And Gertrude just eats it all up. Gertrude tells her, all right, it's her turn. And she begins to split the lands causing Happy to fall and then closes them back up once she's gone. Gertrude takes the key and she says, finally, she can leave and she can go back home. She begins to open the door and the light shines and Gertrude begins to walk through telling Claudia she's gonna miss her. Claudia says that she's just sad that there wasn't more death with her goodbye and Gertrude stops. She says, Claudia, that's a good point. Larry tells her, don't! But as Gertrude turns, she causes an eruption covering the queen in flames. And that's when Larry finishes his sentence. Kill the queen. As Gertrude begins to laugh, <laughs> she hears the door behind her slam shut. The key then disappears and she asks Larry, what happened? And Larry explains, whoever deals the fatal blow to the king or queen will become the king or queen of Fairyland. Gertrude is now the ruler of Fairyland and she can't go home. And that brings us to the conclusion of volume one of I Hate Fairyland. This was one of those books that I started reading and I just fell in love with. And I had to tell you guys as soon as part two started up. Now it already started up continuing the story of Gert as the ruler. And you need to read this. This is like my book of the year to recommend to everyone. It's the greatest thing ever. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Comic Story and Instagram at Comic Story. And I'll see you here next time at Comic Story.